What is up everyone? Welcome back to part two of the Tornado Iceberg. We are in the deep depths now, so pretty obscure stuff, pretty dark stuff, so viewer discretion is advised. If you haven't seen part one yet, highly recommend you do so. It's in the description below, so be sure to check it out. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Layer four, the deep depths. The 1965 Palm Sunday outbreak. Between April 10th and 12th in 1965, a major tornado outbreak struck the southern and midwest portion of the United States, resulting in 266 fatalities and $10 billion of damage adjusted for inflation. There were no F5 tornadoes that day, but there were 18 confirmed F4 tornadoes. The state of Indiana was hit particularly hard during this outbreak. Some examples include the Midway Indiana F4, the Elkhart Dunlap F4, and the Kokomo F4 tornadoes. The Palm Sunday outbreak was one of the first to be studied by Ted Fujita. It was here where he discovered evidence for multiple vortices within the main tornado when surveying the damage. Forgotten F5s. Some of the more notable F5 tornadoes, such as Joplin and Moore, tend to steal the spotlight from dozens of other F5 tornadoes. Many of the F5s from the 2011 super outbreak often get overshadowed by other tornadoes from that day. These include the Smithville and Philadelphia, Mississippi F5 tornadoes, as well as the Fife, Rainsville, Sylvania, Eider, Alabama, Georgia tornado. The 2011 Joplin F5 tornado may have taken the spotlight away from another F5 tornado that occurred only two days later. The 2011 El Reno Piedmont tornado, which resulted in nine fatalities. There are a few other notable tornadoes that have been given the forgotten F5 title. These include the 2008 Parkersburg, Iowa tornado and the 1998 Lawrenceburg, Tennessee F5 tornado. El Reno Storm Chaser deaths. The 2013 El Reno tornado was so large that many very experienced storm chasers unfortunately were caught within the outer boundaries of the tornado itself. This, along with the unusual path of the tornado, put many of the storm chasers in danger, which resulted in four deaths. The most well-known deaths are that of the Twist X crew, Tim Samaras, his son Paul Samaras, and meteorologist Carl Young. The other storm chaser who died was Richard Charles Henderson. Henderson was able to snap this photo with his cell phone only moments before his death. Five others who were not storm chasers also tragically lost their lives from this tornado. The tornadoes don't hit downtown areas myth. This is something I did a whole video over, but there is a persisting myth that tornadoes don't hit downtown areas. And this is for a variety of reasons, from asphalt heat to building wind disruptions. Of course, this is not true at all. Downtown areas can definitely be hit by tornadoes. They just have a small geographic footprint making it unlikely. Some notable examples include the absolutely striking 1997 Miami tornado, the Nashville tornado in 2020, the 1999 Salt Lake City tornado, and the 2000 Fort Worth tornado, which blew out many windows in its downtown skyscrapers. The 1953 Warner Robins tornado footage is a well-known video taken extremely close up to a tornado. The video is pretty insane considering it was taken in 1953 and was way ahead of its time. Rumor has it that the man who filmed this tornado was named Vince Rupert and he had passed away in the process. I did a video on it. However, it has come to my attention that his name may have been Sergeant Louis Porchniak. I might be pronouncing that wrong, Porchniak. And that he actually survived. Codell, Kansas. Codell, Kansas is a town that, according to Ripley's Believe It or Not, was hit by three separate tornadoes three years in a row. What's even crazier is that all three of these tornadoes occurred on the exact same day, May 20th. The 1916 tornado was an F2. The 1917 tornado was believed to be an F3. And the 1918 tornado was the most devastating, likely being an F4. May 20th is now known as Cyclone Day within the town's community. Forest tornado scars, I love these. In heavily forested areas of the US, you can see the remnants of tornadoes long after they occurred. If we look at Alabama, for example, you can still see forest scars to this day from the 2011 super outbreak. Pretty insane. Now, the most insane might be from an F4 that hit Western Pennsylvania on May 31st, 1985. If we zoom in, you can actually see where the old tree growth meets the new tree growth. Joplin scar on Google Maps. Related to the forest scars, you can still see the path of the 2011 Joplin EF5 tornado on Google Maps to this day. If you zoom in, you can still see a line from the lack of tree growth throughout the southern portion of the city. Trees? No trees. Mud baby. In the aftermath of the 1999 Bridge Creek Moor tornado, 
Tragically, an 11-month-year-old baby by the name of Aaliyah Crago was found face down in the mud. She had been thrown from her mother's arms and miraculously survived. Her mother, Amy, also survived. The entire episode was captured on dash cam video. The photo of him holding Aaliyah covered in mud has become an iconic image from that day. Cuba tornado footage. The Cuba tornado footage is the oldest known footage of a tornado. This was taken by the British Pathé back in 1933. This particular tornado was spawned from a hurricane. Drive south. Here's a controversial one for you. During the May 31st, 2013 El Reno tornado, the tornado appeared to be heading towards southern Oklahoma City. During the live broadcast on KFOR, meteorologist Mike Morgan encouraged viewers living in specific areas to drive south to get out of its way. I'd go southbound, do it now. Uh, just take I-44 and just go down to Newcastle. Just get out of the way of it. This was already around rush hour, and it resulted in some insane congestion on the interstates. These interstates essentially became parking lots. After the event, many blamed the dangerous congestion on Mike Morgan due to his drive south statements. KFOR meteorologist Mike Morgan faced criticism on social media outlets after he advised people during Friday's tornadoes to go south. Tornado ghost towns. These are towns that have been completely wiped off the map due to tornadoes. The most well-known tornado ghost town is Manchester, South Dakota, which was destroyed on June 24, 2003, after being taken out by an F4 tornado. Some other notable tornado ghost towns are Melva, Missouri and Jordan, Iowa. Kind of want to travel to one of these ghost towns and check it out. Inside a tornado. So what's it like to be on the inside of a tornado? Is there a tornado eye like in the movies? Well, technically, yes, there is an eye to every tornado. Of course, it would be nearly impossible to see. From the videos we do have from the inside of a tornado, it mostly becomes a extremely dark and covered with dust. Multi-vortex tornadoes have several vortices from within the tornado's boundaries that can be seen in this video. Perhaps the most well-known aspect of being within a tornado is the pressure drop. Many survivors in both tornado intercept vehicles and storm shelters claim that their ears popped due to the pressure drop. Carson Tinker. Carson Tinker is a professional NFL football player and survivor of the 2011 Tuscaloosa EF4 tornado. At that time, he was a long snapper for the Alabama Crimson Tide. During the tornado, he and his girlfriend Ashley Harrison took shelter inside a closet, and as the tornado destroyed the house, he suffered major injuries, and unfortunately, Ashley Harrison did not survive. On May 1st, 2014, Carson Tinker published a book about the experience and its aftermath, titled A Season to Remember, Faith in the Midst of the storm. Yellowstone tornado. So yeah, the Yellowstone tornado is actually pretty insane. On July 21st, 1987, an extremely rare F4 tornado tore through the Teton wilderness over the Continental Divide and into Yellowstone National Park. This tornado literally occurred as high as 10,000 feet above sea level. I mean, that's two times higher than Denver. Fortunately, no one died, except for probably some animals, during this tornado as it happened in the middle of nowhere out in the wilderness but you can still see scars on Google Earth. We are moving on to the next layer, layer five, deep dark depths. Unexplainable tornado damage. So sometimes in the aftermath of an extremely intense tornado, much of the destruction is so messed up and just crazy that it's almost unexplainable. Sometimes vehicles can be warped and crushed like pop cans. Bits of steel can be warped around trees making crazy shapes. Disc records and tree stumps, wooden spikes piercing concrete. One viewer even sent me a photo of a gun stuck inside a tree. Tornado led to Mayo Clinic. Okay, this is one of my favorite tornado things ever. The very well-known Mayo Clinic, one of the best hospitals in the world, was actually created indirectly from the August 21st, 1883 Rochester F5 tornado. This tornado unfortunately resulted in 37 deaths and many injuries. With no hospital in Rochester and the nearest being in the Twin Cities, the doctors along with Mother Mary Alfred Mose and the Sisters of St. Francis were able to set up a makeshift emergency room at the Rochester Dance Hall. Eventually, this all led to the creation of St. Mary's Hospital and the Mayo Clinic. So in a way, a tornado that unfortunately took the lives of 37 people 
ended up saving thousands of people. And I think that's just such a sweet story. Butterfly Angels. So going back to the May 22nd, 2011 Joplin F5 tornado, many survivors claim that they were saved by some sort of weird cryptid known as Butterfly Angels. Some of them actually believe that they were like legit Judeo-Christian angels. Others believe that they were some sort of mythical creature, either saving their lives or taking victims who perished up to heaven. After the event, the butterfly has become a symbol throughout Joplin. There's butterfly murals, there's butterfly statues. Many of the kids like to draw butterflies. Even when I was on Google Maps, there was like a little butterfly in one of the victims' yards. Very interesting stories. The Lubbock Metro Tower. So on May 11th, 1970, an F5 tornado struck the city of Lubbock, Texas, causing 26 deaths. The tornado came very close to hitting the Lubbock Metro Tower, which is a high rise within the city. It actually ended up twisting the foundation of the tower and caused much of the siding to come undone. To this day, if you actually go to Lubbock and look at the Metro Tower, you can see the remnants of the tornado on the side of the building. Dick Gilbert during the 1974 super outbreak, an EF-5 tornado struck Louisville's airport in the late afternoon of April 3rd and wreaked havoc on the city. As the weather turned bad, Dick Gilbert was in his helicopter in the air. He circled behind the tornado and provided real-time updates on its progress and the damage it caused. He kind of served as the city's eyes that day, and many people gave him credit for saving lives. There's one now. Started, yes, dipping down from the bottom of the cloud, and uh... Let's see, that will be uh, over in the Highlands and uh, probably along Bargetown Road and somewhere near Eastern Parkway is where I guess that one is. The power transformers have been blowing regularly. He received a great deal of praise and honors for his deeds. Absolute legend. Levi Walton. During the 1999 Bridge Creek Moor tornado, many sought shelter underneath overpasses. One particular example was Kathleen Walton and her son Levi. While they were taking shelter underneath the overpass, Kathleen Walton unfortunately was sucked away into the tornado and did not survive. However, Levi did survive. If you go to this exact overpass on Google Maps, you can actually see Kathleen Walton's name spray painted in the location of her death. What's even more crazy is Levi actually wrote his name in the mud underneath the overpass and to this day you can still go up there and see his name as the mud left a permanent stain. The Clem Schultz footage. This is probably the best and one of the scariest and most tragic pieces of tornado footage of all time. On April 9th, 2015, Clem Schultz was in the upstairs part of his house as he filmed a massive EF4 tornado slowly heading his way. As you watch the footage, the tornado slowly gets closer and closer and closer before finally reaching him and destroying his house. Unfortunately, his wife on the floor beneath him perished during the tornado. I was able to find the house before it was destroyed on Google Maps. This is what it used to look like, and this is what it looks like today. The 1978 Whippoorwill Disaster In the early evening on June 17, 1978, the Whippoorwill showboat was having a live entertainment over Lake Panoma when suddenly an F1 tornado crossed the lake and hit the boat, causing it to capsize. Many were caught underneath the boat, and this resulted in 16 drownings. For this reason, this is known as the deadliest F1 tornado on record. The Iowa Boy Scouts tragedy. On June 11th, 2008, many Boy Scouts had just finished dinner and were playing games at the Little Seuss Scout Ranch in western Iowa. Suddenly, an F3 tornado struck the campsite and it resulted in four deaths. The Xena F6 tornado. During the 1974 super outbreak, one of the more significant F5 tornadoes from that day was the Xenia Ohio F5 which took the lives of 36 people and injured over a thousand. During the survey, Fujita initially assigned the Xena tornado a rating of F6 plus or minus one. However, later it was concluded that anything over an F5 is just inconceivable. So it was rated an F5 and that's where it remains today. But in terms of ratings, this is probably the closest we ever got to an F6 tornado. Plaza Towers Elementary School. During the 2013 Moore tornado, seven third grade students were killed when the tornado destroyed the building. The students were taking proper safety precautions at the time, but the walls were not properly reinforced, causing them to collapse. This wasn't the only school to be hit by the tornado. Other schools include the Briarwood Elementary School and the Highland East Junior High School. When they rebuilt Plaza Elementary School in 2014, they also added a brand new tornado safe area. The Conquest of Tunis 
Conquest of Tunis refers to a tapestry that depicts a tornado. What's crazy is that this tapestry was made in 1535, making it the oldest known surviving depiction of a tornado. The Black Friday Tornado refers to the Edmonton, Canada F4 tornado that occurred on July 31st, 1987. This is the single deadliest tornado event in Canada, causing 27 deaths and 600 injuries. 300 homes were destroyed, and there was $181 million worth of damage, which adjusted for inflation is $375 million. We're moving on to the final layer, dark waters. Joan Gay Croft. Joan Gay Croft was a survivor of the April 9, 1947 Woodward tornado, who was kidnapped in the aftermath of the storm. She did sustain a few injuries, most notably a wound on her knee. The story goes that Joan and her sister Jerry were in the hospital's basement when two military-looking men took Joan away, supposedly taking her to a nearby hospital in Oklahoma City. This story was confirmed by both her sister and a nurse. However, after this, she completely disappeared, never to be seen or heard from again. There are many theories as of to what happened to Joan Gaycroft, and I have a video about it, so you should check it out. Southern Airways Flight 242. On April 4th, 1977, a large and violent F-5 tore through the northern suburbs of Birmingham, unfortunately taking the lives of 22 people directly. There were, however, 72 indirect fatalities. This is due to the fact that the parent supercell of the tornado caused Southern Airways Flight 242 to crash in New Hope, Georgia. On what has been a terrible disaster uh, west of Atlanta this afternoon, the crash of a, a Southern Airways DC-9 jet with 85 persons aboard, at least 67 persons have been confirmed dead. There were surprisingly, and thankfully, 22 survivors of the crash, all of them sustaining major injuries except for one person, tornado UFOs. There are some, although a very small population, who believe that UFOs or some unknown species flock to large tornadoes to gain energy. Apparently, since supercells are massive energy systems, these UFOs or beings have the technology to take some of that away. I know it sounds pretty crazy, but Gary England himself actually went onto the History Channel and spoke about a strange rod that appeared on their camera feed during the 1999 Bridge Creek Moor F5 tornado. Filmed in May 1999 and brought to the attention of meteorologist Gary England, this rod appears to fly through a tornado. It looks like a cylindrical tube, but it's a flash. It's a uh, it's a flash that appears in the frame. Bang! Moved very quickly. Thunderstorm that turned out to be that it produced the worst tornado in history. You know, doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm with you, Gary. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Driveways to nowhere. Okay, I'm just really interested in these. When a tornado destroys a house or a building, eventually all the debris and ruins get cleaned up during the recovery process. However, it is very difficult to tear and clean up concrete driveways, so they usually leave them there. For this reason, when you go onto Google Earth and explore tornado hit cities, such as Joplin or Moore, you can see driveways to nowhere. Here's a few examples from the 2013 Moore tornado. The oldest one that I've been able to find is in McDonald Chapel from the 1998 Birmingham F5. Soviet Tornado Village. I did a short on this, but in 1984, the Soviet Union was hit by either an F4 or an F5. It was initially an F5, but they have since downgraded it. This tornado created a huge clearing in the forest, and the Soviets found that very convenient and built a few villages in the path. What's cool is the name of these villages. When you translate these villages from Russian to English, this one means red clearing, and this one means rainbow. Pretty cool. Joplin infection. After the devastating Joplin tornado in 2011, but the pain wasn't over for some. Due to the torn up soil and lack of infrastructure, a deadly pathogen was able to crop up and infect several survivors. This fungal infection affected 13 and eventually took the lives of five. I'll probably eventually do a more in-depth video about this. Glowing Blackwell tornado. So this one is seriously pretty weird. On May 25th, 1955, a large wedge F5 tornado struck the east side of Blackwell, Oklahoma. Apparently this tornado glowed and had arcs of glowing light, which is just insane. Like think of a huge tornado that like glows in the dark. It's just weird. The most plausible explanation I've seen is some sort of St. Elmo's fire, or perhaps somehow the tornado built up a bunch of static electricity. I don't know, but this was probably crazy to witness. A similar event happened during the Palm Sunday outbreak I spoke about earlier, the Ghosts of Moore. During the 1999 Bridge Creek Moore tornado, 
A few drivers on the interstate saw the tornado approaching and decided to take shelter beneath an overpass. This was the same overpass where Levi and Kathleen Walton sheltered. The tornado passed very close to the overpass and caked mud all over the underside of the bridge and all over the occupants. For this reason, you could still see the outlines of those people who crouched beneath the overpass for several months after the tornado. This photo is pretty eerie if you think about it. It kind of reminds me of the Hiroshima shadows. Cooper Pants Factory in Gainesville, Georgia on April 6, 1936, a tornado hit the Cooper Pants factory, which then led to a large fire and the deaths of over 70 workers. Over 200 people lost their lives that day, and most of them came from the Cooper Pants factory fire. This remains as the single deadliest tornado incident in one building. Tanner, Alabama Tornadoes this is a pretty insane coincidence. On April 3rd, 1974, Tanner, Alabama was hit by not one, but two F5 tornadoes in the same day. In fact, they were within 30 minutes of each other. And on top of that, Tanner, Alabama was also hit by an EF5 tornado from the April 27th super outbreak in 2011. This means that this town has been hit by three F5 tornadoes, the unknown bodies of Woodward. So we talked about Joan Gay Croft earlier. Well, from the exact same April 9th, 1947 tornado, there was yet another mystery. In the aftermath, the bodies of three girls were discovered, approximately the ages of 12 years, four years, and eight months. These three bodies were never identified. They were viewed by many people throughout the town and literally no one could identify them. Even Joan Gaycroft's mother stated that the four-year-old was not her daughter. There are many theories, the most plausible being that they were from another town just passing through, or perhaps they were a poor family that many people didn't know about. These three girls are now buried in the Woodward Cemetery. And finally, the Munson family. On June 20th, 1957, Fargo, North Dakota was hit by a massive F5 tornado, one that was very well documented with several photos and heavily studied by Ted Fujita himself. Unfortunately, there were five fatalities from the same family, the Munson family. Five of the six children died that day. The only child to survive was Leroy, who just happened to be babysitting at the neighbor's house. It's really just a very tragic story. Well, there you have it. That is part two of the Tornado Iceberg. Thanks again for 50,000 subs. I know we're over 60,000 now, so thank you so much for that. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.